Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk more about two-dimensional arrays in Java. Here is the outline. We will see how we can print a two-dimensional array row by row and also column by column. Let's get started by printing row by row. Suppose that we have this array. It is a two-dimensional array as you can see. It is an array that contains two arrays. So what we want to do is to print this array row by row. In other words, we want to print 3, 5, 7, and then 10, 2, 9, all right? So obviously, we want to use loops. But before that, let's have a look over here. To print the first row, we will do something like this. I'm using the print method, and first of all, I'm printing integers 0, 0. So I'm printing the first element of the first row, then the second element of the first row, and finally, the third element of the first row. So as you can see, the index of the row is fixed at 0, and the index of the column is changing starting from 0 until 2. Now let's print the second row. We are going to print integers 1, 0, then 1, 1, and finally 1, 2. So we have the same thing, but now the index of the row is equal to 1. So we are going to use nested loops. Suppose that the first loop contains a variable that is called i. So in this case, i will start at 0 and it will end at 1. We will use i as the index of the row. And inside this loop, we will have another loop with a variable j, for example. This variable will start from 0 up until 2. So in each iteration of the outer loop, we will iterate over all the elements inside the current row. So have a look over here. We have the same array, and now we will use this code to print all the elements. As you can see, we have nested loops. The first loop has a variable i that starts from 0, and i is less than the number of the rows. So we are iterating over all the rows, okay? And of course, we have i++. Inside this loop, each time, we will iterate three times, starting from 0 up until 2. So for each i, we will iterate three times. Each time, we will print integers sub i sub j. So for each row, we will iterate over all the elements inside this row and print them. And this will be the output of the program. So what's happening exactly over here? First of all, i is equal to 0. So now we are executing this loop. We will start from j equals 0, j less than 3, and j++. plus plus. So now we are going to print integers 0, 0. So 3 will be printed. So now we will execute j++. Plus plus. Now j is equal to 1. So we are going to print integers 0, 1. So now 5 will be printed. As you can see, i is not a change. We are still in the first row. Now we will execute j++ plus plus again. And now j is equal to 2. So we are going to print integers 0, 2. So 7 will be printed. Now when we execute j++, this condition will be false. And as you can see, we are done printing the first row of the array. And since this condition is false, we will now execute i++, because we finished the first iteration of our outer loop. So now i is equal to 1, and this condition over here is true. So now we will do the same thing with i equal 1. So now we are executing this loop, and we will print integers 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 2. So 10 and 2 and 9 will be printed. So after these elements are printed, we will increment i, and now this condition is false. And as you can see, we printed our array row by row. So as a small summary, when you want to print the array row by row, you will have two loops. The outer loop iterates over the rows, and the inner loop iterates over the columns. And each time we will print integers i, j. i is the index of the row, and j is the index of the column. Now let's make this a little bit better. We have the same code, but now, after we finish printing the row, I'm printing a new line. So after we print 3, 5, 7, we will get to a new line, and after that, we will print 10, 2, and 9. So this over here will be the output. And now it's more obvious that we are printing row by row, okay? Now let's talk about printing column by column. So over here we have the same array, but now I wrote it in this way to make things clearer. Previously, we were printing row by row. So we printed 3, 5, 7, and then 10, 2, and 9. Now we want to print column by column. So we want to print 3 and 10, and then 5 and 2, and finally 7 and 9. Okay? So have a look over here. If you want to print the first column, we will print integers sub 0, sub 0, and then integers sub 1, sub 0. So we are working in the first column, and we are printing all the elements in the first column. This time, the index of the column is the same, and the index of the row is changing. Now, if we want to print the second column, we will do something like this. 
The index of the column is now equal to 1 and you are printing the first element and the second element. And if you want to print the third column, the index of the column will be equal to 2 and you will print the first and the second elements. So this time, the outer loop will iterate over the columns and in this loop we will iterate over all the elements in this column. So have a look over here. This is our array and this is how we will print the elements. In the outer loop, I'm using a variable i starting from 0 and i should be less than 3 and i++. plus plus. So I'm iterating over the columns over here because we have three columns. And inside the loop, we have an inner loop that starts from 0 and j is less than 2 and j++. plus plus. So in this loop, we are iterating over the number of the rows. So the outer loop is for the columns and the inner loop is for the rows. Now have a look over here. I'm printing integers sub j sub i because j is the index for the rows, right? Because the inner loop is responsible for iterating over the rows. So it should be the first index. And the second index is i because i is the index that is responsible for iterating over the columns. And after we finish printing a column, I'm printing a new line. And this is it. So what's happening exactly? We will start with i is equal to 0. And after that, we will print integers sub 0, sub 0. And then we will increment j. So now we will print integers sub 1, sub 0. So we printed the first column. We printed 3 and 10. Now when we increment j, this condition is false. So we will print a new line. And after that, we'll increment i. So now i is equal to 1. And we will do the same thing. We will print integers sub 0, sub 1, and then integers sub 1, sub 1. So we printed the second column. 5 and 2 and now when we increment j this condition is false so we will get to a new line and increment i so we will print integers sub 0 sub 2 and then integers sub 1 sub 2 so we printed the last column we printed 7 and 9 so when we want to print column by column the outer loop will iterate over the columns and the inner loop will iterate over the rows and be careful to use the correct index over here j is the index for the row and i is the index for the column okay now let's try to use the toString method to print a 2D array. So we have this array and have a look over here. I'm printing arrays .toString and I'm passing the integers array as a parameter. And this over here will be the output. So this is our array and inside the array we have two elements. This is the first element and this is the second element. The first element is an array. And as you know, when we print arrays, we will see the address. So this is the address of the first array and this is the address of the second array. So when we are using the toString method with 2D arrays, we will get the string representation of our 2D array. But we will not get the string representation of the arrays that are inside this array. And in order to get the string representation of the arrays that are inside our array, there is another method that is called deep to string. So this method will call the toString method on our 2D array and it will call the toString method on the arrays that are inside this array. So now this will be the output. So we are printing our 2D array and then we are printing the toString representation of the arrays inside this array. So this is the string representation of the first array and this is the string representation of the second array. Alright? So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.